Well, hey, Gundam fans, welcome to episode 23 of the Gundam Explained podcast. I am your host, Adam Blue, and this week, like every week, I talk about Gundam and prove to everyone that M-Machine is the best Gundam pilot. Um, if you don't believe me, uh, yeah, come meet me at my address. Actually, it's GundamExplain at gmail.com, but let me know what you think. Uh, maybe we can talk about it on here. Uh, but anyway, um, this week, uh, you know, it's like the holiday week, Christmas. Not many people are actually doing things, or are they? I mean, maybe, you know, people are probably still working, obviously, and some people are not working. But I don't think Gundam is holiday-specific, right? I mean, it, it, if anything, you watch Gundam on holidays, you receive Gundam on holidays. So um, just because it's a holiday doesn't mean we won't talk about Gundam, I think. I think that's accurate for me this week, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but really, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, um, you know, we do these giveaways, right? And I said when I hit 600, I'll be giving away two things. Just, you know, put in the comments something you're interested in. But I already hit 600. Not only did I hit 600, it went to like 650, um, like in a matter of a day. And that could be a bunch of bots, so that could go away. But still, that's awesome. Thank you, everyone. When I see those numbers um, and th that, you know, translates to more engagement in the community and then it makes me excited to talk about Gundam or come up with things to talk about. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about uh, Gundam this week. Um, it, oh, and you know, speaking of that giveaway, so I'll probably have a video up shortly after this where I will um, announce the winners and then announce the new giveaway. Um, I would say it would be once I hit 800 subscribers, so that could be... Um, a lot sooner than we think, so then I might make it 900 or 1,000. It really it really depends, but this Saturday I'll know for sure, so watch for a video. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Uh, I felt like there's there's really so much to talk about. You know, Christmas. Again, I brought that up a little bit ago. Um, you know, I'm not a super religious guy, but I enjoy the tradition. I'm from Texas, and, um, you know, growing up uh, here where I have in the DFW area, we I just celebrated Christmas, and Christmas is everywhere. You know, just like in Gundam, they don't necessarily seem to talk about a specific religion, although cults, and I don't mean to compare the two, but religion is sometimes mentioned, you know, in the background. And uh, it, specifically with UC, actually, I don't know with other Gundam. So if there's other Gundam, other Gundam other than UC that actually gets into religion, let me know and, and leave a comment about that. I'd be interested. But I mean, we can just see like Inside Six for 0080. Uh, we had, you know, the streets were decorated. We saw the, you know, the Santa inflatables. Uh, They're playing Jingle Bells and everything. Um, and, you know, just a couple things I got recently. I did show off, you know, speaking of Christmas, uh, one of our um, top contributor to the comments, it's almost like he's doing a minute-by-minute -minute commentary, sent me a Moon Gundam, and I actually completed it. So hopefully that comes in clear here because I know I'm using this New camera with a lens that is a manual focus. I wanted to get that good uh, depth of field going on, so that actually stopped me from... I'd have to spend a lot more if I wanted the autofocus, and then I bought this awesome arm to put the camera on, so then sometimes it shakes, and uh, I'll fix that in the future. I mean, really, to make this perfect, I'll have an autofocus with that depth of field. I think it's like an f-stop of like two, so I forget what I have it in my notes. <laughs> But also, um, yeah, get it. I think it's this table. I got a standing table, and yes, today I'm sitting. I've noticed the when I stand, I tend to like rock around like that. When I'm editing, I'm cringing. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm just sitting for today for right now. But yeah, it just it shakes, and so I'd want to get a maybe another tripod or something. Maybe it's mounted on the wall behind that. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully, I don't give anyone motion sickness that's watching, because really, you could be listening. In which case, you wouldn't even know what I'm even talking about, right? Yeah, that is kind of weird. Um, but, you know, uh, speaking with Christmas, another awesome Christmas gift that came to me and stole from my wallet was uh, this uh, Zeon, um, Zeong, actually. This is what Char used in the at the end of 0079. And it's the perfect Zeong. So it actually has the legs. There's a review up uh, on the channel for it. I was going to have the Moon Gundam Gunpla review at first, but I got this. I was like, oh, I have to have that out there. A lot of times when Robot Spirits first come out, I don't see reviews out. And, and it's kind of hard. It's kind of a, 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 a rare thing you don't, I don't really hear most people get. There are some good ones out there. UCRD Reviews, I want to say that's his name. Um, I watch his. And he'll do uh, 
recently released ones or sometimes some older backlog stuff. And that's kind of like what I'm doing too. So there's, and there's so many out there that uh, I think we more compliment each other than anything. Um, but um, so then I'll probably have the moon gun one go up soon. And then I'm going to have one go up for the high grade origin. Um, and that one also will include uh, the panel lining technique I use in terms of what I use, how I apply it, and then how I clean it up and make it look. So, um, yeah, that'll be cool. So watch out for that. So, um, yeah, I guess, you know, let's get started. Let's jump in. If there's nothing else, really, let me check my notes. Um, yeah, because in terms of uh, any Gundam-related goodies, you know, again, since it's Christmas, really just behind for everyone else, and really that uh, Perfect Xeong took away the rest of my budget for a couple of years. Um, but yeah, let's uh, jump into this. Uh, actually, let's go, just looking at my channel real quick, uh, uh, again, we're at 652, that's awesome, so thank you, everybody. Um, again, that was such a fast leap, I'm wondering if that's a bunch of bots and it's gonna go away, so. But, you know, just to show you, um, you know, the last video I had up was the Gundam that will make you cry, and it looked like I was crying in the video, and it was coming to me. My eyes were getting moist, but I didn't go that far. So that was clickbaity, but it wasn't because it's the truth, right? And, um, th you know, that video is doing really good. I'm really glad people are watching that one. And then the other one before that, and we'll talk about a little, a little bit of this later, is the teaser trailer for that Kuru's, if I even say, I, it's like I have to look at it. Uh, Kukuru's Doan's Island. It's good. hard to say for some reason. You know, that's Gundam for you. Uh, but yeah, I guess it's a movie coming out next year. It's really cool. A year, a year uh, from the previous movie to the next movie. It's a very cool. Um, and then we have the uh, Robot Spirits Perfect Zeong. That's what I was just talking about. And then another you know, the last podcast. So, and we'll get into some of the comments that came up from that time but anyway you know in the meantime if anyone has any critiques feel free to comment let me know what you would like to see what works what doesn't work now that i'm getting more comfortable about being in front of the camera and even my editing i could edit a little quicker and add more to it let me know what will help things be a little more enjoyable um if it has to do with my face or my voice i'm sorry but uh all right let's jump into the discord um which is awesome by the way uh the community here is really cool um, and that, sometimes I show some behind the scenes pics. Like this is when I first got the perfect Xeong. I had a picture of him with the legs and then, uh, Amaro standing right there. Very awesome. <laughs> Moving on. Santo Bell. He, he knows he's really, he really knows obscure Gundam and stories and everything. And this is, um, the original, uh, prototype transforming MS. And I didn't look this up or I did, I think. Yeah. And that's a Greek symbol. I want to say that was Sigma or something related to that. Well, yeah, look at this. It has that look of, I mean, very Zeta-like. Um, but yeah, it just looks really cool. It's just, and then the transforming and all that, I love it. Very cool. And then, sorry, I have a little bit of allergies. That's how it happens here in Texas when the wind is strong. But, and then Uncle Tom uh, showing his uh, Robot Spirits uh, new Gundam, which is really awesome. I did a review on it, but I really like the pose he did here. I didn't do anything like this. I really like how... He has, you know, the saber kind of held back, the arm reaching out with the fin funnels in this configuration. Um, fin funnels, not funnels. I think these are just fin. No, they're fin. Fun. There's different terms for them, aren't there? Yeah, I'll, I'll get to, I'll get that uh, eventually. Um, and then, yeah, Santa Bell was showing off this P Bandai version of the Justican in the box, in, in all blue, but you know, very cool. I think. Uh, you know, some of these are pretty rare, so it's cool to kind of get glimpses of that in there. And was there anything else? Um, you know, one thing I appreciate, and I called it out on that teaser trailer reaction video I did, was um, it, the members of the Discord uh, showing, like, oh, look at that. That just looks great. I mean, yeah, that's Origin, but what if they made a Robot Spirits version of that, you know? And then, yeah, the trailer's up there, and then some more artwork. This poster looks really great. I just love kind of that old school look. It's that origin style, um, even old school. And even the posters for the movie Trilogy was in the style, and I believe it's the same artist anyway, who is, I believe is directing it also. Um, was there anything else? Um, I want to say in general, yeah, we had uh, Mo who posts all the time. 
uh, was also uh, posting here. And yeah, so in yeah, community comments. Ah, oh, I forgot. Yeah, Will posted something in here. You know, it's funny. I see this Gundam, this unicorn standing next to, next to the tree. And it took me a while to notice the hands down here. So someone's like in the suit. At first, I thought it was just some custom giant model someone built. But no, there are human hands unless it is a giant custom model and then someone put human hands there. I mean, you never know. Um, and something I missed before. First day out of pilot school meets Zeon Ace Shar Aznable. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's when they're at the uh, Jaburo base in South America. Uh, at, at a certain point, mid middle middle to end of uh more middle i think of the original series but yeah if you think about it those gms are kind of newer in production so obviously all these guys are for or new pilots um and they get taken out and i like even though it wasn't the gm specifically i don't think it was more of those thunderbolt ones and thunderbolt how they show the new pilots coming in and how they're all excited i kind of like that uh, makes me want to watch Thunderbolt again. Should that be what I review next? I was thinking of going MS Igloo. But we'll see. But anyway, what's really cool, though, is with the Robot Spirits version of if you have the Robot Spirits GM and uh, Zagok, you can actually do that same pose. I forgot if I even did a review on that one. If not, I probably will. But yeah, you can do the it has a little effect part where you can plug that in on the back of the GM. Mimic that same thing. So. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Um. I might have missed some other things because Will is pretty good at this. Yeah, Sharfield. Some of these are found on Reddit, but you know what? I don't really have the time all the time to go through Reddit, so it's nice to have someone to kind of find the good stuff. The Simps. So, you know, okay, I recognize everyone here, but I'm not too familiar with Turn A yet. I just know that's a character from Turn A, so I can't wait to get into that, but we have, yeah, all the other... Uh, UC characters, so that is cool. Yeah, what was this one? Hi, Zach. Hi, New. Hi, Gog. <laughs> That's a good one. All right, I think we are good there. So I wanted to jump into more of that Kukuru's Doan's Island um, uh, movie that's coming out next year. So again, it's just really cool when it comes to Universal Century Gundam, the fact that we had Hathaway's Flash this past summer, and just a year later... We're going to have this this new one that's based in 0079, and I just think that's awesome for Gundam fans, especially consider Gundam's been around for so long, right? And that they are now, you know, it's 40 years, and they're now going to be doing, they, they're they going to take a concept from the original Gundam and just redo it with this origin style that looks great. So it's like, man, it doesn't matter what age you are or when you get into Gundam, there's always something cool that calls back to what makes Gundam awesome. Um, yeah, not too much. I guess the, the original trailer, I think, was on Twitter. That's probably why I found that GPLA, I think, I forget, GMP, whatever that YouTube channel was that I linked in my other video, they had, it, it was 25 subscribers. I was like, why would they have the video? Is it even real? But I guess because they originally had it on Twitter. And it's in Japanese, so I can't really read this unless I use a translator. But um, yeah, they're going to help out here. Um but you know what? Let me um, <laughs> put on my old man glasses. And I got to say, I've been doing this podcast since June, July, and it seems harder and harder to read. So is my vision really getting there? I mean, I'm getting close to 40. Um, but anyway, so Yoshikazu Yasuhiko, thank you, uh, the character designer and animation director of the original series, is directing the movie. The other staff includes M. Gahi, Sunny Boy episode director. So that makes me think, oh, maybe I should check this out. And then um, Toshizao Nemoto, Bakuten, again, I, I've, I recognize that, but I don't know what it is, as scriptwriter. Yuji Kaneko, Josie, and Tiger and the Fish uh, as art director. Maybe I should check that out, too. Nagasi Abe, or Abe, uh, perhaps. Uh, uh, Scarlet Nexus. So that's a video game I know about. Is that also an anime, or are they referring to the video game? As color designer, that's cool that they call out people that are color designers. Um, it's like this team that's working together. Um, oh, so Morihi, Morihito Abe is the Hathaway CG director. Um, and then and then 
Takayuki Hattori Space Brothers live action. That sounds awesome. Space Brothers. Let me just look that up real quick because this is like live action. Um, live action. Huh. Is that really a thing? It, that just sounds cool. I might check that out later. If anyone knows anything about Space Brothers, let me know. But the reason I think it's cool to like see who's making this stuff and like look up other work they do. I was about to say art. They do. And it is art. It's because of that. It's it's these artists that have come together to create something awesome and it resonates with me. So um, I'm sure that when they are putting together the teams that they want to create these Gundam shows and movies, they want to make sure they have the right artist to portray what they want out of Gundam because Gundam does a good job of that, of portraying a specific experience. Um, so yeah, a lot of other people were even seeing an origin code character designer. Um, oh, a Gundam Breaker Battlelog co-mecha designer, which I got to say that was pretty cool for my first really dive into something that was non-UC, even though it was kind of related in, in the way. Um, oh, Hajime Katoki. So that is, yeah, we know Katoki. Verka. So uh, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, they're getting a lot of good people together to uh, to work on this. So that that's really awesome. Um, anyway, to sum this up, awesome. We're getting another Gundam movie, and it's gonna have Amuro Ray. Ah, uh, that's just awesome. He's my favorite, probably because he's like the first. But still, it's uh, I like Amuro because he he's like. He's cool and he has his emotions, but he doesn't get as whiny as Camille, even though I think Camille was awesome. But what's funny is Judo. I love Judo. Judo just seems like a badass the whole time. He needs to get more play. And you know what would be cool, too, is if there was a... And that's the thing, I think, when it comes with dubs and subs is... I think... And that's really interesting because with the original Gundam and the Zeta trilogy movies, they were subbed and it was a series that were dubbed. And I wish Judo had... Uh, Judo's character had an English dub because I really want to... Yeah, you can get a connection when they when they do that right with the, the acting, the voice acting in, in the language that I'm used to, really. Okay, so... This is cool. Like, if it wasn't cool enough, the Moon Gundam just came out, and they still have that banner going on right now. They've got the Hazel Custom. I, I consider this one of my favorite mobile suits. I have this one and the the Titan Colors version, the high grades, which I did a review on that. But it was right before I started doing my new format, and so I just scrapped it. I still have it. I wonder if I should just, like... Do a commentary over. I don't know. But uh, maybe I'll redo it. But And that Robot Spirits that's coming out. And I think it's a metal one. Is it? I don't remember. It, it doesn't matter. But it's in Gun of Battle Operation 2. And yeah, I hadn't been playing this recently. But I jumped back in to get my 30 coins. I'm almost there. And then I'm going to go in to try to grab this guy. Um, it said click there. But I can click here, can't I? Oh, that music. It's been a while. It's funny because I actually have the music muted because I've heard it so much. It's driven me crazy. But, but look at that. You, you know, that's what's cool about when you build a Gundam model kit. You, it's, it's like after you're done building it, it's like you feel like you're a part of the mechanical design. And you like can see every aspect of it. No, yeah, that I remember building that. I remember that's of it. Like just seeing the ammo patches uh, pouches on the side and the, the gun with the thing in the front. Um... Very cool. And then I guess, yeah, some, oh, some Titan stuff, which I know they do have some, but I guess some more. And then uh, GM Quill, which I th is already in the game. I actually have this, but I guess the idea here is it's a level three or something. I st still got to say, I don't understand exactly what it means when, like, you can either only get one at a certain level if you've gotten its previous levels or stars or something. I don't know. But again, for anyone that's new and haven't heard me talk about Gundam Battle Operation 2, it is worth playing. It's free. And you get a bunch of free mobile suits all the time. And I think they're a lot more generous with the mobile suits. Like I did the um the free they've been doing the free supply drops, and I get like half our mobile suits, and they're actually really cool. So can't like I got the uh 
Faz or Faz, F A Z Z, the other day. That one's a beast, and I got destroyed using it. Yeah. Well, you know what? That is that. Um, and you know, really, just to show this real quick. So, Mobile Suit Gundam: The Witch from Mercury. It's a new series coming in 2022. We've talked about it before, but I think they just recently announced what or, or showing off what the real title is going to look like. And you know, I didn't really look too much into it, but I think what they're referring to this is the English title um and how you know it's going to be marketed uh in western territories or for english consumers you know even though it says mobile suit at the beginning i used to think that denoted for sure universal century but i don't think that's true i, I think mobile suit is on ibo as well and um you know so it's like i wish it was uh um something you see related you know it still could be uh but it might not be now they they say how this is di directed or they're marketing this for for kids or a younger audience and you could tell if you watch most of them hathaway that's not for a younger audience so it could be and it might have already been confirmed it's not uc so i could be just putting my foot in my mouth but this it could be that they are just making some uc stuff that's for a younger audience or that really, this is just another one, just like IBO, just like other series that come out that have nothing to do with UC. And you know what? I'll probably jump into it, uh, even though I haven't really seen anything else outside of UC, but I think this gives me a chance as it's coming out to enjoy it with the rest of the community as new Gundam is coming out and talking about it. And I mean, really, that's all I had to say about that. I've been, that just seems cool. Okay, Mobile Suit of the Week. RX-121-1 Gundam TR-1, Hazel Custom, yes, I just had to do it. If I haven't already done it, if I have, uh, again, put in my mouth, but I, I just wanted to go over this one because, um, you know, it's released in Gundam Battle Operation. We've got the Robot Spirits version that's coming out, and so it's like this is a good chance to kind of refresh on it so we can look at you know, the standard look of it, where, again, it has that that Mark II look that's exaggerated a bit. And, you know, I got to say, I like the red nails. It kind of works out. And here's an awesome look for it that you can actually recreate with the high grades if you get the option parts or the other, other ones. Ooh, sniper. Wait, is that even a different helmet, too? Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, just some more drawings of it, but... Let's talk here. The RX-121 Gundam TR-1 Hazel Custom is the upgraded form of the RX-121 Gundam TR-1 Hazel from the Universal Century timeline. It was featured in Advance of Zeta, the Flag of Titans. Unit is piloted by Wes Murphy. Wes Murphy. Seems like a cool name, but I'm not digging that. Unless, if it was a Japanese name, I think it, it, it would kind of go with this design here. Um, was that racist? No. Nah. And let's see, he's a Titans officer, so that's always cool. Okay, so let's uh, go back down. Okay, I always love this stuff, okay? One, I like how on the profile it says combines into the RX-121. Oh, that reminded me. That reminded me, and I will get back to it, but let me open up that tab. Yeah. Okay, and you know what? Let me actually go through this first. So... We're going to talk about the Hazel, right? And we see like it combines into, developed from, developed into, hmm, variants. Okay, variants. That's a big deal here. Because if we look at this post on the subreddit for GBO2, someone's like, oh, F and finally, AOZ. And then I told you to pray. That's actually pretty dope right there. But this post just made me laugh. AOZ is going to be cool, but just remember that the Hazel is not the same as the Hazel Spare Type, Advanced Hazel, Hazel Custom, Hazel Avzla, Hazel 2, not to be confused with the other Hazel 2, or Hazel 3, yeah, who, how do you say that? And the Hazen 3 is not the same as the Hazen 3 Ra, and the Hazen 3 Ra is not the same as the Hazel Ra, and the Hazen 3 Ra is not the same as the Hazen 3 Ra 2, and the Ra 2 is not the same as the 2 Ra and the wound wart also exists. And do not forget the key heart and the key 2 and advanced key heart 2. And also the gap lint is from the TR lineage. And the gap lint is not the gap lint 2. And also the wound wart is not the wound wart raw. That 
made me laugh because when I've looked at the development history of the Hazel, there's there's so many variations. But I guess that's something that's really cool about Advance of Zeta, or I guess the whole Titans idea is they were kind of like this branch of the Federation that they got to really get into weapon development, mobile suit development. They were crazy time, crazy time in, in mobile suit development. And they were going all out with all of these different types of variations. Like, look at this. Look at how, wait, that just, what? It won't, uh, oops, is no longer available. It might be in hacked. Okay. Well, that picture is no longer available, but there we go. At least we can check out its rear. Oh, I like that. That reminds me of the, um, let me go back into my encyclopedia. You know, the GPO-4, it has a name to it, but it has that kind of jet thing, you know, and then the, what was the GPO-4, the Xeon remnants got a hold of it, the Delaz fleet, something like that. Anyway, so this thing, what? A herdudu. is that what that? This thing. Oh, look at that. That looks I love these designs. This makes me want to play like R Type or Thunder Force. I love jets like that. Ooh, look at that. Man, those things look awesome. So for those not watching, we're just looking at some cool advanced of Zeta Titan stuff that's related to the Hazel. Um so it combines into, so I guess yeah, it combines and does all that crazy stuff developed from the Quell, which we're familiar with, Stardust Memory. And then the regular Hazel, that's not the custom, but what's the difference? Titan colors. Is that what the difference is? Maybe, but they're still white there. I don't know, but still some of the best design we see in mobile suits. Um, let's look at some other stuff. So developed into the Hyzak Vanargand. So let's look at that. Where did that open up? Wow, look at that. So we're seeing Hyzak. It's like a Zaku that was developed further, I guess, within Titans. But then this is taking a lot of other elements from the Hazel. Yeah, and wow, this is a sick... This is my first time seeing this. What, does this mean there's a, there's a model kit of this? Holy macaroni. No, you know what we would be able to see? Because usually down at the bottom here... Um, no. Usually the picture gallery will show if there's some action figure stuff. This looks like it. Um, I don't know if anyone has any more information about that. I'm going to have to look that up. But that thing looks great. Oh, I like how it's showing the Zaku, Hi Zach, and how it's adding things onto it. Man, these guys know how to design a mobile suit. Okay, so let's get back to... The main course here. The variants. Okay, let's look at that. The Icarus unit. Again, looks great. Reminds me of the uh the Biarlant. Biarlant. Um with the with the shoulders right there. That is that is sick. Look at that. Man, these things, I don't know what it is. It's almost like eating a pizza. Just consuming these designs is just so good. Okay, so moving down here. Manufacturer, Conpatho Arsenal. Oh, a Bawaku. Okay. Interesting. So I guess this was just a Federation outpost, I guess. After that attack, they just started doing some super high-tech development there. That will be something cool to dive into. But let's look at the technology and combat characteristics. So after Lieutenant West Murphy's Gundam TR-1 Hazel was heavily damaged in combat with Xeon Remnants, it is repaired and improved using a GM Quell stationed at Conpeto and spare Hazel parts stored aboard the Oswan. The Hazel custom reflects the combat data and development know-how accumulated by the original Hazel. The machine's enhancement parts, which previously seemed like an afterthought, have been better balanced with the other parts in the machine's internal structure to make it more a more complete mobile suit. As a result, its external appearance has a more unified feel, and its lighter weight and increased thruster output give it roughly 10% greater acceleration. 
A 360-degree panoramic monitor and linear seat system have been installed in its cockpit on an experimental basis, and its operating system has also been upgraded, so this machine's operation is greatly advanced from the original Hazel. The, modern, the model number of this rebuilt Hazel has been shifted from RX-121 to RX-121-1. Because the Hazel's unique shield boosters were lost in its previous battles, the Hazel Custom is equipped with a normal shield for the time being. The loss of the shield boosters admittedly reduces the Hazel Custom's mobility, but its overall performance increases increase is enough to make up for this. Due to its redeployment schedule, there wasn't time to repaint the machine in Titan, Titan's color, so most of its armor remains the gray color in which it was molded. So very cool that that's the case. So it's molded in a certain way. And then it was the Titan's colors that were applied on later so interesting uh the hazel customs basic specs including its generator and thruster performance are similar to those of the gm quell its leg sections house thermonuclear rocket engines with an output of 17,500 kg apiece and its backpack is equipped with the same movable booster pod as the original hazel the thermonuclear reactor inside this pod serves as both a supplemental generator and a hybrid jet rocket engine with an output of 390 kilowatts and 18 1000 kg respectively the hazel custom retains the support actuator units and enhancement parts of the original hazel and can carry all the same equipment a multi-weapon latch can be plugged into its center skirt armor to support options like a subarm unit or a flexible beam rifle unit and another multi-purpose latch is located above its cockpit hatch while the hazel customs high mobility form is identical to that of the original hazel its assault form is equipped with the same booster pod used by the rms 117 gobbledy high mobility type Rather than the Hazel's usual movable booster pod, two shield boosters are attached to this booster pod, and the mobile suit is also equipped with the Gobbledy's extend, extendable shield. So let's look at that real quick. But that's that option part shield we were talking about. And wow, that looks great. I love how it has that like Gelgook look. Although Gobbledy's maybe just look like that in general. That'll be something we'll dive into later. I love that gold shield. Man, it's like another pizza topping I didn't know about. It's excellent. Um, ah, sorry, my allergies. Okay, armaments. Beam Saber, Vulcan Gun, XBR, M84A Beam Rifle, Long Blade Rifle, Special Equipment Features, Shield Booster, Multipurpose Weapon Latch, Movable Booster Pod, Subarm Unit. Configurations. Oh, co there's a sniper unit, which we were looking at. A variation of the Hazel Customs version features the Long Blade Rifle used by the RX-121-1, FFX-29, A Gun, TR-1, Hazel Raw. Oh, my God. Equipped with one shield booster, this version also features a mono eye visor in place of the standard dual eyes. And then the subarm unit, the multi weapon latch in the center skirt armor of the Gundam Hazel Custom, is designed to serve as a multi purpose joint for various option parts used by the Hazel. This subarm unit, one of the devices uh, intended to connect to the multi weapon latch, contains secondary arms folded away. Inside what looks at first glance like extra skirt armor, these subarms allow the Hazel to carry a beam rifle or other weapons even when both its main arms are obstructed by the attachment of shield boosters. So this reminds me a lot of the, oh, when it's right there, the, uh, you know, from Unicorn, the, oh, it's like I have to go back into my encyclopedia again, you know, the green, the green one that Marita Cruz was in. Anyway, it has arms that come out um, on the, the shield, uh, boosters uh, i think they're called binders but it's almost like the same type of technology there the subarms can also be used to wield secondary weapons like beam sabers just like yeah or to replace energy packs from both main arms or holding weapons that's cool uh despite the effectiveness of the subarm unit the complexity they add to the mobile suits fire control means they require a high degree of pilot skill so this system is never widely adopted yeah, that's why you don't see it too much but you see it with the why can't I think of its name? From Unicorn, you guys know what I'm talking about. Marita Cruz uses it. Um, yeah, so let's see what they got here. Okay, so this is supposed to be a scale model. I don't have this one, though. Yes, it's 1-200. That's interesting. Vance of Z, Flag of Titans, Revival Set. Oh, I'd love that. But I have these two guys. These first two. I just don't have these other pieces there. Got that. Looks great. Oh, that's with ex expansion parts, which I don't have. Master grade. Ah, when I first got into Gundam, when I was first building model kits, this is when I was looking at it again. I still haven't got it. 
I will one day. Very cool. Very look at that. I love it how they do the because this is the the high the high grades, but they have them like you know set with a diorama, the the star field in the background. I love that stuff. Any cool trivia that's not me just talking about video games? No, not really. So, oh yeah, right here. The Hazel's name is derived from the character Hazel, fictional rabbit character from Watership Down. Wow, I never heard about this. So, Watership Down is a book written in 1972 by Richard Adams. It's an adventure novel set in southern England. And the story features a small group of rabbits. And that's why on the Titans test team symbol, it's rabbits. It's all coming together now. See, you see how integrated information is with Gundam? It's great. There's layers. There's always layers. Well, anyway, that was the uh, Hazel. I'm glad that um, we're seeing it come to GBO2. And the Robot Spirits version will come out later. Um, yeah, what do you guys think of the Hazel? I love it. All right. Okay, so yeah, let's get to comments. Um, so, what was the last one? I want to say it might have been this. Robert, you know Robert. Robert's always commenting. This is from my Double Eighty War in the Pocket Episode 5 review. Put Luke Skywalker in the Chirdium, Chird, Chirudim, Gundam. That must be, I think that's from Double O or something, right? I don't know. With a horror unit as his companion droid, and then pit him against a force of eight ATAT walkers from his home turf. Who wins? Gundam with Luke Skywalker and a horror or the Empire's heavy walking monster. Oh, Luke. I mean, Luke blew up a Death Star in an X Wing and murdered millions of people. And then he was cheering and happy about it. Luke would win. All right, Robert with some more. Oh, c congratulate me on my 587 subbies. Yeah, it's crazy how far it's gone since then. Santo Bell, you had me at Moon Gundam. The UC Go video was a bench test they released to see if your system could run it. The game itself was a 1-1 scale Australia-based after Operation B British and also allowed you to head into space. Players controlled almost all vehicles from the MS to the transport and ships. It was a lot of fun, but I mostly goofed about it in it as... Uh, at the time, there really wasn't English support for the game. Okay, yeah, that makes me jealous. And it, it reminds me of that UC Engage game on mobile right now. Like, it's in Japanese, so it's like there's not really much I can do but goof around. Yeah. Santo Bell. Oh, about Halo. Halo was good, just a bit short. Had a blast with it. The psycho plates can... Oh, Moon Gundam. The psycho plates can be moved about and reformed into different forms. They are... Used as swords, shields, flight systems, barriers, and so on. That's awesome. The moon is a combination of the MRX 0133 or 0133 Psycho Gundam and the Vargwell. The Psycho gets its head cut off and the plates crash into the moon colony, which starts the whole manga off. The manga is worth a read. Oh, and the UC Engage version uh, is the Bargill. And from what I can tell, is its moon with a full set of Psycho plates. Wow. Thanks. Uh, Santo Bell with all that information. Um, I, I, I love the Moon Gundam. I got more into it now. You know, thanks for Robert sending me that kit uh, too. Like, it, it, yeah, it's very cool. And yeah, Halo. So yeah, I, you know, I don't know if I remember talking about that part. I've beaten the Halo campaign. Yeah, it was pretty short. I think the open world era you could do really quickly. It has some, I think it though, it's about the length of a Halo game. It's just that it has some corridor-based linear missions that are not open world that are boring. They go on and on forever, similar to, what was it called, the library from the original Halo. But it, it, it there's so many other parts of that open world map that haven't filled in yet. I really think what they're doing is they're going to be adding some single-player content where there's things you can go explore in the different areas. So look forward to that. Oh, Santo Bell, the cat was ill. She got a bug and it messed her kidneys up. But she's good now. Yeah, I remember when you made that comment about your cat. I wasn't too sure what you meant. Um, but yeah, it's sad. You know, we get we get angry at our cat, our cats when they're annoying, but then sad when they're hurt. Santabelle, I like how Char used the incomplete one and still caused so much destruction. Well, I think the perfect Xeon was a direct downgrade from the original. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I wonder if then 
having the feet with something so big and then being in space is unnecessary. Yeah, it's, I, I, I'd like to explore that some more. Yeshua, hola, gonna explain in a lot of stuff in Spanish. I put gracias. I think they were just saying thank you for reviewing this. So that's cool. Thank you for your comment. I really appreciate it. All right, we'll read. I missed this in the Discord. This looks great. I'm stoked to see more UC content. The mobile suits and ships look great in this animation style. I'm familiar with the lost episode synopsis, and I think its underlying message will be great for an updated modern interpretation. Yeah, you know, when I first got into Gundam, and admittedly, I was downloading the shows. This is before I bought the Blu-ray, and I was really confused by the number of episodes and then i saw that there was an a episode that was cut from the english version and that's when i first read about it and thought that was interesting so yeah it's interesting that they're making that in the movie and it does have a good message uh so yeah that's great papa jerbear excited to read this just ordered the first book well thanks yeah let me know what you think you know what i just realized i've been wanting to read more books i've been reading some other types of books and i gotta go back to this and finish it who am i who am i even um, uh, Rod Riggs 99, first time commenting. Thank you. I'm, I've been a viewer for some time now. Great stuff, man. Are you going to go into the deep dive on this? Just an FYI. There's also a side story to the origin based on this episode with added backstory. Manga is called Mobsu Gundam, the origin Kukuru Doan's, Kukuru's Doan's Island. Look up the covers of the manga on the wiki or Google when you have the chance. They look absolutely amazing. There's two Gundams in that side story to two heavy Gundams. A baddest black one and a white colored one. The story centers around how and why Doan defected from Xeon and ended up on the island. It also shows what happened to his team. Really cool to know. I'm going to definitely do a deep dive on that. Um, I wonder if I should check out that. So I have the first origin book and I don't have them all. I, I really should read that because, right, right, there's more pictures. I don't have to read as much. <laughs> um, so I should probably get into that as well. So thanks for bringing that up. All right, Fisher 12 Fish, the burgers at home. I get it, the meme. Um, you know, you know, it's funny how people make jokes about burgers and Bernie, and I'm, I'm, it makes me sad. Now, obviously, we're just trying to have fun, but poor guy. Yeah, they talk about how he looks like hamburger when they're like, who survived the other cockpit or in the other mobile suit? Or, yeah, who was in the other mobile suit? And they're like, oh, it looks like hamburger. And there's all the references to burgers throughout the episode, so, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, that was a good one. I like I like it. I like the memes. Santo Bell, I feel like this is one of those do men have feelings meme moments. I'm, of course, referring to the cheek kiss scene. I would love to see Al return at some point in some future show or book. Yeah. Yeah, I talked about that. Um, uh, what well, meme added to Discord. I wonder if I saw that or not. Let's look real quick. Um... What is it? Shows and movies. Um, general. I might have missed that. Yeah, let me know, uh, Santo Bell, if I missed that. But, yeah, Al seems like he would have another story to tell without it being like, oh, a continuation. But I would like to see how Al has grown up knowing the world around him is the same. Like, I would love if... Oh, what if it was him now... Obviously, they already have the Hathaway story, but it was him fighting Hathaway or trying to stop Hathaway. Because Hathaway and him kind of went through a similar thing where war kind of shaped their young minds to go into the directions that they are going into now. But we don't know about Al. Um, Dimas R.A., oh, not again, my tears. Yeah, you, it's like you could watch 0080 again and again, and it makes you feel the same way. Santo Bell, 607 subs, well done. This should time you over until Hathaway Part 2 and The Witch of Mercury. Can't wait to add another RX-78 to my collection, as I'm sure kids will follow movie release. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, yeah, thanks for the, the congrats on the on the subs. Um, yeah, it, it's awesome. It really is, actually. Okay, and then a lot of these, it, something must have happened all at the same time because I got so many people coming in to comment to win a model kit. People are saying like they want an Evangelion kit, area model kit, etchy model kit. Um, Eva or Ava, um, Godzilla model kit. So, I mean, to be honest, really, like whoever wins, I will take your comment. 
I will look at it and I'll be like, is there something that is this related to this that I can easily afford and send off? And I would love to do that. That is the plan. Although there's also that uh, G-frame, uh, the white Zaku G-frame. So I'll be sending that out to someone as well. But a lot of cool ideas in here. Um, Nuke Matrix Fox. I don't even know what that is. Snail Shell Studio Wolf Gen. I'll be looking this stuff up because I have not even heard of this. Yeah, someone else is saying Nuke Matrix. Let me look this up. Fox and Rabbit. Oh, you know what? Did I see this on Jobby's? Oh, Zaku Aurelius might be. Sometimes Jobby the Hung, you know, does these. Very cool. You know what? I'm not really into the anime girl thing yet, but um, now that's pretty cool. It's got some armor pieces and all that. Um, let's see. Um... Yeah, some more comments. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, okay, well, that's it for those comments. So please, yeah, if anyone, um, I let's see. By, by the time you're listening to this, you might have a small window to add your comment if you want. So, yeah, go ahead and do that. But, no, I think that really does it for this episode, uh, episode 23 of the Gunner Explained podcast. Thanks, everyone, for watching, listening. Uh, be sure to like or subscribe if you haven't. Again, there's giveaways going on. If you missed this one, there'll be a video up for another one. Um, but also, if there's anything you want me to talk about on the podcast, you have any ideas, any cool topics, let me know. Um, and uh, yeah, this will be up on Christmas Eve. So, you know, Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays for everyone watching. Let me know anything Gundam related you got. That would actually be pretty cool. Yeah, let me know. Join our Discord. Let me know anything Gundam related you got. That'd be pretty cool. You know, shout out also to the Gundam Wiki. I had one of the admins reach out to me um, about, you know, me using the content for the show and that, you know, we can have our communities um, kind of combined forces. So, yeah, maybe we can, um, yeah, do something with that because um, it's always cool to share Gundam knowledge around that. So, anyway, yeah, join the Discord and um, we'll talk later.